Welcome back to another UFC fight prediction video. In this video, I will be predicting the main card fights for UFC Fight Night, Blades versus Nganu. So without further ado, let's get to our first fight of the main card. So this fight card hasn't really, you know, they haven't really cleared out what's the main card and what's not. Like, you know, Francis Nganu versus um, Curtis Blades or Curtis Blades versus Nganu will be the main event and Overeem versus Pelovic will be the co-main event. But everything else below that can be switched around so you don't know what will be the actual main card or what will be the cutoff i'm predicted like the five fights that like are as far as in the order right now are the top five fights is the main card and anything else i will if it's updated i will like talk about you know like in the comment section below i'll update and give my picks on what's on the main card i will update it, you on like if anything's changes about the main card and then give my predictions with those adjustments like say if somebody falls out get injured like so anything we get like any changes i will comment on and give updates on so basically i'm gonna predict what's there right now and what I perceive to be the main card and anything else that changes, I will um, comment on it and update you about it. But so besides that, let's get right to the um, prediction. So in our first fight on the main card, we have in the welterweight division, Keenan Song versus Alex Moreno. So when I look at Alex Moreno, I see a very aggressive dude. He's a solid fighter, but he relies on aggression and like almost blind aggression. But it's probably not that blind as you think because you, you don't get here just all blind aggression, but it's. He's effective at what he does. He closes range. He gets in your face. Gets up under you, swinging those big hooks. He definitely has some power to knock people out. If he can land those big shots, those big windmill winging shots, big winging hooks, and he tries to make the range very small. But then I look at Keenan Song. A great physicality to him. Physicality to him. He's very good at reacting to like takedowns and getting back to his feet. You know, his feet. What I think is like will be his path to victory and like sets up his win for him. Is he has a very good straight. He has very good straight punches. He has very good power on those straight punches. He has very good control of range, and he has good composure. And against somebody like Moreno, who kind of comes like a, a bull, when you got somebody that could kind of be like a matador, and they got like a, that knife, his straight is like a knife. He's got, Alex Moreno is running right into that straight with his style, unless he changes it. But it, he has, what, 20-plus fights and has really not changed that style too much. It is like he's just been doing the same thing. So he's gonna, I think he's going to run right into that straight often in the fight. And Keenan Saul is going to be able to kind of just play to that, you know, play to his style and find openings for that straight. And I see him catching Moreno and knocking him out in the second round. So in this fight, I have Keenan Song via second round TKO. Then on to our next fight, we have in the welterweight division, Lee the Leech Jillian versus David Zawada. So looking at Zawada's debut in the UFC against Danny Roberts, he's a pretty solid fighter, pretty well-rounded, good. Definitely was most impressed about him, him to me, or what stood out was he was least offensive. He never really tried to just rest in any position. He was always trying to work. And it could have really easily been like a unanimous decision loss for him, but his effort and constant, like, you know, attempting submissions, even in bad positions, just like his work rate made it at least sway one judge to believe it could have went his way because he was offensive with these submissions. He got pretty close to a couple of them, but Danny Roberts just was the better fighter on the night. So that was impressive about him in that fight to me. But against Jillian, I think Jillian's fighting in his home country. I think his grappling is more solid than um, Danny Roberts. And then as far as these two go, he's the better striker than Zawada. So I think it could be a fight where, like, like I said, Jillian's going to be in his home country. He's going to be motivated. He's gonna have, he has all that experience in the UFC. He's going to be able to use that veteran IQ, that experience to kind of put on a workman's performance. It's not going to be like no dominant knockout or no dominant. This, he's going to take him down and just dominate. It's going to be a, not a gritty fight. But I think Jillian's going to be the edge, you know, just by, based off his experience. And I think, he, like I said, I think he's a better grappler than Danny Roberts. And he has heavier top pressure. So that would be a shut down a lot of um, Zawada's submissions off his back. And just really kind of smother him and like the heavy top pressure neutralize a lot of his um, attempts at grappling and submissions. So like I said, it's going to be kind of close. It's going to be gritty, but Jillian with his heavy top pressure, his better striking, his veteran IQ will be at the edge to fight and win a at least clear enough decision. So in this fight, I have Lee Jillian via decision. Then on to our next fight, we have in the Bantamweight division, Sung Yadong versus Vince Morales. So Vince Morales, solid fighter. He's definitely well-rounded there where he's a decent fighter. Good age, good um, frame, all this stuff about him. He got a lot of stuff working. He has Pretty scrappy on the ground, pretty scrappy fighter, but definitely not too impressed by him as far as what goes in. Like when you look at Sun Gadong, even younger, even more physical features, more prospects around him. Vince Morales went like was on the contender series, lost, got submitted, then went on to be some guy who was like what eight and seven. I don't know some ugly, atrocious record in Bellator. He and he took him to a decision. Like so, where Sun Gadong came in and beat a solid um. Solid fighter in um, Felipe Aranis, who's been around the UFC for a minute. And at one time, was one of the better prospects in the 135 division at one point. And he just ran through Morales. I mean, to, it ran through Felipe Aranis worse than all these other prospects who had went on to do great things in the UFC. He just ran through um, Aranis like he was 
even wasn't even competition. So basically, what I'm just saying, like I'm just as far as the performance goes off and the MMA math and all that stuff, Song Gedong just seems more impressive than me. I think he's a more physical fighter. He has the physical features. You know, on the, on the, on the feet, he has those daily elbows. He's daily in the clinch. He with those short like shots. And he's good at controlling distance and picking his shots. Very accurate. Very sharp. And the submissions. He just knows how to find a kill in all areas, whether it be a submission or on the feet. And re- in reality, I just think like this is like really something about I think the physicality is going what's going to win him in this fight. I think Morales, like I said, he's a good fighter, but the physicality in your dome will be the stronger fighter. He's going to be the sharper fighter. He's going to hit it harder. And I think it's just really, he's just going to be riding that momentum and he's going to be able to just pick apart Vince Morales on the feet. Morales is going to try to make, you know, try to get, make it close. Or at least, um, as a matter of fact, I think it's sometimes going to get close. But when they like, it's going to have to be one fight where it's going to get into that close range. And then your dome going to piece apart, whether it be Vince Morales getting picked apart at, at distance and had to get in. And they're getting tagged, or whether um, Vince Morales getting like, I don't know, either way, it's going. I think at one point, some point in this fight, Vince Morales is going to make a decision to come inside, and that's when it's going to be the end of the fight. And I think it's going to be rather quick. I think that's going to be in the first round. And I have Song Gedong via first round TKO. So in this fight, I got Song Gedong via first round TKO. And now on to our co main event, we have in the heavyweight division, Alistair Overeem versus Sergey Pavlovic. So looking at his record, undefeated Sergey Pavlovic is. Young, pretty good size. I think was six three, looking like a big dude, solid record. But then looking at his record, actually analyzing, I'm not really saying too many impressive wins. Yes, he's young, and yes, there's always this chance for improvement. Like especially with these young fighters, are these newcomers to the UFC or newcomers to the big leagues? They always have these chances to have these big leaps in talent and all that stuff. But um, actually, I'm just like looking at the people he beat. I wasn't too impressed, and like how he beat them, not too impressed. And as far as against Overeem, who's one of the more well-rounded fighters, period, one of the veteran fighters, period, in MMA. I think striking O-Ring will still have a huge advantage. Grappling O-Ring will still have a huge advantage. It's really this Pilavic maybe using his youth, using it like at least his greenness, or not greenness, or at least that the fact that there's not too much tape on him and there's still a lot of stuff he could add to his game. That could be his best of, a chance at victory. But other than that, he just got the same chance everybody else has, a puncher chance at O-Ring trying to touch that chin, trying to get in and, and tag his chin, hope for that big shot. But I think O-Ring just going to make the smart move. I think he's been training with Curtis Blade, so maybe he'll mix in some wrestling here and there. To make to even take that often off the table for him, maybe go for a submission. But either way, I think O Ring has too many tools and just a better fighter all around, other than chin wise and that one big punch landing and knocking him out. And O Ring could knock him out, O Ring could submit him, O Ring could decision him. I think O Ring could just win this fight all types of ways. But I think O Ring is gonna kind of fill out him in the first round, then the second round go attempting to clinch and land a big knee to the body, curl him up, and then finish him with some ground and pound. So in this fight, I got Alistair O Ring via second round TKO. Now on to our main event, we have in the heavyweight division, Curtis Blades versus Francis Ngannou. So, when actually like looking at this fight, when I first was looking at like the rematch, I didn't really go back and look at the fight. I was like, um, it's going to be easy fight with Curtis Blades. Stephen Malachi already set the blueprint for beating Ngannou, and Curtis Blades has all the tools to do that. But looking at the first fight with Ngannou versus Blades, you see that it's not that easy. Cause, um, and even looking at Stipe versus Ngannou, it's not that easy. And as far as and the, the Stipe loss, it was a combination of both Stipe making the right moves and Ngannou making the wrong moves. And you look at Curtis Blades versus Ngannou the first time. Um, and Ngannou actually looked pretty solid. He wasn't like trying to land those big shots. Like he wasn't just going for the hell, like the like the um, hell Mary type shots to try to go for a big shot, trying to run through Blades. He was actually just picking Blades apart on the feet at times and like picking his shots. He wasn't just throwing big overhands or just going for uppercuts. He was actually setting them up. He was throwing uppercuts, but he at least was setting them up and not just throwing them out there like, all I had to do was land this and knock you out. He was at least saying, like, looking for cues and then doing stuff. Like, he's saying, like, if somebody was dipping for a takedown, he was doing uppercuts. He used to do it, like, do a jab or feign an upper, like, overhand. Like, saw um, Blades dip it down, he was doing uppercuts. He was doing some combinations. Unlike in the Stephen fight where it was looking like a lot of times he was just doing, like, just winging haymakers all back and forth, doing head kicks, then doing overhand, then uppercut, just winging and stuff, and just trying to just pretty much knock somebody's head off, head off without actually really setting anything up. So I think Ngannou still has a very solid fight in it. And even in the first fight with Blades, his takedown defense with double leg was solid. He had a very good takedown defense for solid. It wasn't like, like I'm not saying, I'm, I'm going to keep saying solid, but he had solid hips for those takedowns, like special double legs. So in the Stipe fight, it was um, singles that really got things done. Then after the wear down, the double legs opened up. Then different stuff, like the blast up and all that stuff opened up after like the wear down effect happened. But another thing, you can't just all talk about Ngannou. Curtis Blades as well had some good things in the first fight. He took plenty of power from Ngannou, got dropped in the first round, got back up, kept fighting. He never was discouraged. I got swelled up, but he was still fighting. It was not like he got beat up by Ngannou, was looking for a way out, and then the doctor stopped. It was like he was still very much in the fight. 
I think momentum was actually kind of coming towards him a little bit by the time the fight was stopped. You know, he had one eye swelled up. He was still in there. He took, he felt Ngannou's power, but never at any point was he like discouraged. He kept being in there, kept fighting, kept going for shots, kept trying to work his game plan. And so it's still good things you could draw from both in that first fight. And this fight would be a completely different fight. I think Curtis Blades has improved more than Ngannou, but with people think Ngannou's on the down slope, like, oh, he might lose this fight or he might have lost his edge. I think his edge is still there. I just think, um, especially in this fight, he already has a win over Blade. So it's, it's a lot of stuff that you might think is on the table or might be talked about. But this fight, I think, is going to be a very a very different fight than people expect. I think it's going to be a very tough fight for both fighters. And whoever wins is going to have to go through a, gotta go through a lot to get that win. It's not going to just be, oh, uh, Curtis Blade is going to go for his first shot and get his first or second shot and just keep taking him down back and forth until he just TKOs him and wears him out or submit him in like the second or third round. It's going to be a hard fight. Everything will be hard for those then Ghana's gonna be able to defend the takedowns. He'll probably be able to get up from the takedowns as he was able to get from Stefe, as he was able to get up from Blaze and all that stuff. He'll be able to deal with the takedowns, be able to deal with the grappling. But can it's more so can Curtis Blade um hold his own on the feet better time? I think Curtis Blade's striking has come along better since the first fight. So I think he'll be able to hold his own on the feet a little bit better than in the first fight, or significantly better than in the first fight. And I think Curtis Blade, just the style-wise, like when somebody got that wrestling over you, even though Ghana was good at defending, I think the repeated onslaught and the repeated pace of these takedowns, the repeated efforts gonna wear on Nagano. He's definitely probably trained to improve on those things, but I think it's not gonna improve that significantly in just that amount of time. It might be able to give him a shot and it which it will. And I think that's why it's so close. Like this thing could happen. Like if he could defend a couple of shots, get back to his feet just enough and like pace himself just enough and don't stay um composed enough, he could definitely win this fight and put on a uh comeback performance as far as off those two fight losing streak. But I think as far as I just gonna go to Curtis Blake because he could definitely take Nagano's power. I'm not saying you want to take Nagano's power, but he's definitely not afraid of Nagano's power. He could take it and he's gonna be his striking gonna be better now. He's gonna be there to like like um to at least stand with Ngannou at times and then better set up these shots. His shot selection has gotten better. He's gotten better at MMA wrestling instead of just like college wrestling, like MMA wrestling, like getting better in the clinch, getting better at like you know mixing your striking with your shots, and that's gonna change the whole racket things from the first fight. So he's not gonna just be going for those outside shots. He's gonna be going for singles. Gonna be going for like mixing his striking and his takedowns. And on the feet, I think he'll be able to hold his own at least decently and respectably enough with Ngannou that when he get him to the ground, he could keep setting up these shots and each shot's going to wear him down. Or e- even each attempt's going to be wearing on Ngannou. And I think it's going to be like a fact where it's going to be a good good f- couple fights. Like it's going to be a good back and forth fight for maybe Ngannou's going to win a couple of the early rounds. But it's going to be a good back and forth fight. And then like down the stretch, like when you get to those big rounds, the fourth and like the end of the third, the fourth, the fifth, or right, if it even gets to the fifth, it's going to be those rounds where Curtis Blades' cardio, his wrestling, years of wrestling at that level he wrestled, and his skill is going to really shine through and be able to break Ngannou down. I think he'll be able to stop Ngannou, I think, late in the fourth via submission. So, like I said, I think it's going to be a very tough fight. It's not going to be no easy fight. It's no blueprint that's just going to give Blades an easy win. It's going to be a hard fight win. Ngannou's still a very dangerous opponent. He's still even still much more dangerous than people realize or kind of forgot. Because they kind of saw the Stipe fight and saw the, um, the um, what's it called, Derrick Lewis fight. But I think he's going to be very game in this fight. And that's why it's going to be a hard fight for Blades. But I think he'll be able to grind him out and get that submission late in the fourth round. So in this fight, I got Curtis Blades via fourth round submission. And that concludes my fight predict- predictions for UFC Fight Night, Blades versus Ngannou 2. Thanks for watching. Our the predictions for the main card of UFC Fight Night, Blades versus Ngannou 2. But that concludes this video. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and come back for more videos. Peace.